growing up in Scarborough at a time when Scarborough was, uh, yeah, brap, brap. So, but Southern, Southern Scarborough, like, you guys don't know how old I am, but like Southern Scarborough was <laughs> old, yeah. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, Southern Scarborough was not what it looks like now. It was like, you know, me and my brother were the only black kids in our whole school. Wow. So In Scarborough? In Scarborough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> McCowan and Eglinton. What? Imagine that. I know. I know. Not till I was in grade seven was there any other black people in our school. Wow. Yes. Thank you to her for coming through. <laughs> so... From a very early age, we were very aware of what it was to not be part of the big party that was happening. Um, and I think that, you know, that helped mold um, the position. Um, you know, I don't think it, it, it sort of made me or any, my, my brother or whatever, we weren't angry about it. I mean, it was just, you know, we're not the same. And people were very clear about saying, you're not the same. Um, and we embraced that. So it's like, we're not going to be the same. And we're cool with not being the same. And I think that Part of that sort of uh, was, was seated in the brand in that um, we wanted to make clothes for people who didn't want to be the same and wanted to you know, point out the fact that they were happy not being the same. And I think that's when the brand succeeded, it was because we were able to connect with the people who wanted to make a statement about how proud they were to be different. And I think as we sort of continue on um, with the brand, I think I still try to in, in, infuse that into uh, the stuff that I do. And at the same time, my other work um, very much has to do with creating uniforms. Um, so people who want to say, I'm part of something, whether it's part of something that's the same as, uh, as big as Canada, or I'm part of something that's as small as a hip hop culture in Toronto. Um, so it's sort of, you know, part, I want people to know that I'm good with being different, and I want to connect with people who are the same and feel the same as I do. Were your parents supportive of it off top? Yeah, my mom was, she's, you know, like single parent, raising three boys and doing whatever she had to do to make it happen. And, you know, I think she, like most, uh, you know, first generation Canadians was, you know, would rather have had me go to law school. Um, up until probably maybe 10 years ago, she was still asking me if I was going to go to... <laughs> <laughs> what about teacher's college? I thought you... <laughs> didn't you want to be a teacher? <laughs> Where was she from? Jamaica. Nice. Yeah, Spanish town. I mean, I big know that, but I'm just... Big, I, up, big up your chest, Spanish huh? Insert gunshots. <laughs> <laughs> so, we know what it was like in Southern Scarborough at the time. Southern Scarborough. Southern Scarborough. Um, I'm going to refer... Pre-Malvern. Pre right. We, we were so poor that we didn't even get into Malvern. <laughs> I remember application denied. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was, um, what was the, the, the city like at that time? What was Toronto like? Because I mean, I know for us when we were young, um, younger, uh, we used to travel to different areas around, you know what I mean, around the city. We'd go, you know, wherever we live, we'd go to the east, west, always to pick up girls. That's the only reason we travel. What was the city like, you know what I'm saying, like the, the vibe of it, the atmosphere at that time? Yeah, I, I think it was the same. I mean, we, we would, you know, um, we would get across the city too for the same reason. So we would spend most of our Saturdays, at, you know, at, at Eaton Center on the second floor by Le Chateau, <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which was the best spot because you could see like two different floors at the same time. <laughs> and, and I mean, it was, it was house parties and roller skating and like that was my come up. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think it was a lot different than what's happening now because it wasn't so regional neighborhoody. Mm. Um, you know, like there, there weren't these sort of neighborhood boundaries that you couldn't go, you can't go through here. I mean, we, if there was a, um, you know, if there was a house party, um, you know, we go anywhere to, for a house party. Like, mm -hmm. and, you know, like when we worried about what's going to happen or, you know, how you're, you know, you're going to have to, you know, leave out real quick or anything. It was, it was a lot cooler that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, like that probably changed sometime in the 90s. Um, you know, along, along with a lot of other things that sort of change culturally, you know, and, and with the music as well. Was it, um, I know we spoke about specifically like the school that you went to and, and the neighborhood that you grew up in, but was it, <clears throat> um, was, the, was multiculturalism on a whole in the city embraced at that time? Or, because the thing is, it's like, you know, 
from, I know my parents came over in like the early 70s or whatever, and I know that various people from various different countries around the world um, kind of came over during the Trudeau times, during the Trudeau years, but yeah. was the city um, at that time, um, were they open to embracing multiculturalism like when you were coming up high school and into yeah. university? I, I think a lot, a lot of what it is now, I mean, they, they talk a lot about embracing multiculturalism, but it doesn't really... Uh, it wasn't really affecting us in a way that sort of helped us get to the next level or helped us um, as a young, you know, like 20-something-year-old kid, even coming out of university, because I graduated, you know, from U of T, not York. <laughs> but you know how that goes. So, so even coming, out of, even coming out, of, out of university with my U of T degree... <laughs> You know, the, city, the city's per perspective on multiculturalism wouldn't have led me to a position where I would have been able to go to a bank and get a loan. Mm. So that also formed the basis of how we decided we were going to do business. And um, that's sort of been formative, you know, through the entire uh, time that I've been doing business is, is, you know, like, do for self, don't ask for nothing. Mm. So um, our, our way of getting around the fact that we wouldn't have gotten a loan to, to you know, I, could, I, I just imagine going into a bank manager's office and saying, yeah, so I got this T-shirt idea where I'm going to do T-shirts <laughs> that say, you know, it's got a picture of a lynching on the front, and there's a debt to American to the Negro people which America can never repay, and I just need like a few thousand dollars to make this happen. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, I can, I can see the, you know, I can see the end of that story. So mm -hmm. let me just scrape together my pennies and whatever. And, and literally, we started the business with um, just under two thousand dollars. Wow, wow, that's yeah. insert clap. But adjusted for inflation, that would be probably about $14 million. 